something more than a beautiful melody to tell the story of truth and reality I think that a song should be sung by a man who knows the meaning of, of sorrow the meaning of true love. I think that a song should be shared among friends. Then when friends are gone, the melody and me still lingers on. Tales of the good times. to sing. You went in the jungle and you touched a lion. And that's a song. And all oh, that lion started to roll. Oh, you touched a bell. And that's a song. That bell started to Bye. Uh -huh. 
you're not awake yet. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Sabbath School. I am excited to see your faces. Let's bow our heads together for prayer. Father, we are grateful for what you have done already. We're grateful for the blessings of learning, the opportunity to share in a corporate manner. Be with us as we study today. Give us what we need. Continue to sustain us. And when you come, Father, save us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just want to welcome all of you to Sabbath School. I know that Sabbath School is early and it's cold and it's wet, but we have the ability to be here, so that in itself is a blessing. If you'll turn to your neighbor and just say, Happy Sabbath. There we go. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Adrian Rhodes. I am the vice principal here at the academy, and it is wonderful to see your faces this morning. As we move forward into worship today and into Sabbath school, please, I tell my students this all the time, and they do it without me thinking. In fact, I say to them, stop, stop doing this. But please, please feel and have the ability to share. We need to learn together. We want to share what we've learned and how God has blessed us together as a group. So please, when the questions are answered by our wonderful teacher this morning, share. We want you to share. With that said, I'm going to ask Dr. Thomas to come. He is our Sabbath school teacher for this morning. I hope you're ready. All right, here he comes. Good morning. It has to be a little better than that because today you know what the subject is? It's about praise. It says worship that never ends. Worship that never ends. So that means we should be excited to praise God this morning. So lesson study is a give and take. So there's going to be parts of the lesson study that I'm going to ask your participation and I'm hoping that you will comply. So first, let's just have a word of prayer over the lesson study that despite myself being the one up front, that we'll all learn something from this lesson study. So dear Heavenly Father, we thank thee for another Sabbath day. We thank thee for the rain, because without the rain, the food would not grow. The grass and the trees would not bloom. So we thank thee. We thank thee for the parents being able to be here this weekend. And we pray and we're thankful that they have come here safe. And we pray that they will go home safe. This is my prayer. Amen. 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 All right, y'all bear with me today because this is not something I do every week. So, this is the Sabbath school lesson. It's worship never ends. So, one thing I learned when doing this and studying for this Sabbath school lesson is that there are three reasons that we worship and praise God. Say three. Three, three reasons, three. and I'm going to go over them real quick. The first reason is we are worshiping and praising God for what he's done for us in the past. How many worship God because you look back at your rearview mirror and look and saw what God's done for you. And then we woke up this morning and we looked in the mirror and said, praise God because of what he's doing for us today. So first we thanked him and praising him for what he done yesterday. And today we're praising him for what he's doing right now. And then by faith, we are praising him for what? for what he's doing tomorrow. He hasn't done it yet. But because we have that relationship, 
I'm going to praise God today for what he's going to do tomorrow. Does that make sense? Y'all would, so I, 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 I'm going to give an example. And I'm going to use the example of parents. Parents from Pine Forge Academy. Parents of Pine Forge Academy. Y'all say amen if you agree. For an example, the parents at Pine Forge Academy, they praise God because yesterday or in the past, for some reason, they don't know why, they were able to get their child registered at Pine Forge Academy. And sometimes when we look at our pocketbook, we don't understand it. We just praise God that it happened. And then some of us has come down here for senior presentation. Or you come down here for a parents conference. And you look at your child's grades. And you look at your purse. And this morning you looked in the mirror and said, I have to praise God because my child is still here. I don't know how I made September's payment. I don't know how I had a Christmas and a tuition bill paid. So when I looked in the mirror this morning, all I could do was praise God. And then the parents, especially you seniors, you're here for senior presentation. Senior presentation is saying, I am celebrating my child's graduation on faith because he hasn't graduated yet. But we're celebrating it today. That means I am praising God today and tonight for my child's celebration in two months. That's what praising for tomorrow means. And see, I've seen some incidents with parents who praise God for what's going to happen tomorrow on a miracle stance. I have seen parents who on graduation morning, their kids were not cleared to graduate. But they brought their kids and family members to graduation on faith. I have seen phone calls being made Sunday morning, Saturday night, prior to graduation. And the parent, even though at that moment, Saturday or Sunday morning, they didn't know how God was going to get their kid across the stage, they had faith. And they brought them to campus anyway. And graduation time, their child was able to walk across that stage with their diploma because of the faith. They don't know how, but that's what faith is. You don't know how, but somehow God works it out. That's what praising God on faith means. I'm praising him for tomorrow, but I'm praising him today. See, I have another example of that. See, 30 years ago, I could praise God. Let, let, let me ask my wife. Hey, Crystal, stand up for me. Stand up for me. Stand up for me. See, 30 years ago, today I could praise God because 30 years ago, he bought my wife in my life. See, and then this morning, I looked over and she was still with me. Don't know why, but when I look in the mirror, I can praise God because she's still with me. But then when we talk about faith, about tomorrow, I can be presumptuous. And I don't want to be presumptuous. 
So I, I, I'm going to ask her, can I praise God that you're going to be with me next week, baby? <laughs> See, now I can praise God today because I know she's going to be with me tomorrow. That's what praising means to God. Then there's another thing I learned about praise this week. That is praise has power. Praise has power. And you say, well, how do you know? When you look in the scriptures and you look at the story of Joshua and Jericho, you see Joshua and the Israelites, they went around Jericho on the first day. Nothing happened. They went around Jericho on the second day. Nothing happened. They went around Jericho third, fourth, fifth, sixth day. Nothing happened. On the seventh day, what happened? No, but before the walls came down, what happened? They went around the wall this time seven times. Still nothing happened. When did something happen? When they shouted praise, the walls came down. So it didn't matter. See, I, I, I believe there's a reason for that. Because if the Israelites had walked around Jericho and the walls fell, then they might believe they did it. But because the walls didn't fall until they shouted out praise, everybody know the only reason the walls fell was because of the power of praise. And see, so many of us have walls of financial independence. And we're walking around those walls thinking we can do something about it. But then one day something happened and you just shouted to God and praised them for something. And all of a sudden the walls of financial independence just fell because you praised. So many walls we have in our life are still up because so many of us are failing to praise. Praise had power. So then I'm looking at that and now I'm getting into Saturday's lesson and before we get into Saturday's lesson, what the, the title is what? Worship that never ends. So my question to you is, well, what is worship? Somebody tell me in their own words, what is worship to you? Anybody, just raise your hand. Nobody. Stand up. So for me, like worship is like praise. Like praise is like you give God accolades. So praise is like you give God accolades and you, uh, you bless his name for what he's done. And then for me, like worship is you give God those accolades because of who he is. So like you worship him, it's like, you're so grateful because of who he is, like his character, not necessarily what he did for you. Amen. Amen. That's the reason we're sending our people to PFA. See, that's the reason. So it talks about reverence or praise or worship shows reverence and adoration. Reverence and adoration. But one thing when I was looking at the, uh, at, at the worship, it talked about praise in two places. It talks about praise in the assembly of God. And what do it mean by in the assembly of God? That is when we are praising God with other believers, other worshipers, other people who believe like we do. But then it talks about praising God in a congregation. Now, a lot of us associate 
congregation with the church. But in the Bible, congregation doesn't always mean to church. Sometimes it just means gathering of people. So assembly means we are praising God with our fellow believers. And most of us do that every week. Every week. But the title this week is Worship That Never Ends. So how are you going to have worship that never ends if you're only praising God in the assembly with your people? To, for worship to never end, you have to be willing to praise God in the congregation. That means praising God at work. That means praising God in the midst of chaos with unbelievers. Worship that never ends says you have to be willing to be evangelical with those outside of the church. When we only praise God in the church, in the assembly, to me that's being selfish with our praise. How do others know why you believe what you believe? Why you feel what you feel if you're not willing to praise God in the congregation. So in order for worship to never end, we have to praise God in the congregation. Now, I, I, I had a story that was told me from someone about a school who they had a basketball game. And that basketball game was done with congregation. So what does that mean? With people who don't believe like they did. And during that basketball game, this is only what I heard. This is only what I heard. That during the fourth quarter, their team was behind by 18 points. This is what I heard. But during the fourth quarter, for some reason, that particular school starts singing praises to God. What do we say what happens when we sing praises to God? It's power. So what happened after they sung praises to God? All of a sudden, that 18 points dwindled down to 15, and they kept singing praises. That 15 points dwindled down to 10. They kept singing praises. Somebody told me that some of the people in the congregation kept asking, why are they singing church songs? at a basketball game. That, that, that is kind of strange, isn't it? Have you ever sung church songs at a basketball game? That's because you haven't been to Pine Forge Academy. See, so they start singing church songs again. And what happened? The power brought the score down even more. By the end of the fourth quarter, some, 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 who, who was there? So tell me what happened. Because I wasn't there. No, what happened at the end? Uh, so Aaron, Aaron Shepard shot the game-winning shot, and we won the game. With no time left? Yeah, with no time left. So the power came just in time. Our students, stay with the lesson, met with congregants, unbelievers, Start singing praises which had power, and sometime God come along when? The last minute. Right on time, and they won the game. You know, some of us say, y y you're making fun. No. The other people were asking our people, why are you singing? church songs at a basketball game. That's evangelism. 
That's what we're talking about. Then we move on and we look at Monday's lesson. Bear with me, I have my notes here. Monday lesson or Sunday talk lesson talks about lifting up hands in the sanctuary. You know, when I was growing up, this is the old time. A lot of our parents didn't like to see hands lifted in the sanctuary. Am, am I telling the truth? Some of you got in trouble you lift your hands up in the sanctuary. Sit down, boy. You have to be reverent. But let's, let's, they, they might not have read these texts, though. I had asked somebody to read Psalms 134, 1 and 2. Psalms 134, 1 and 2. Listen to this for me. It says, Praise the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, who minister by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord. That comes from the Psalms, from the Bible. What it says? Praise God. Raise your hands in the sanctuary. Somebody read Psalms 135, 1 and 2. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise him, O you servants of the Lord. You you who stand in the home of in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Was that Psalms 135? Psalm 135. One and two. One and two. Maybe I done messed up. <laughs> But there's another verse that talks about raising your hands in the sanctuary. So I'm going to ask you a question. Talk back to me. What do you think it means, or why do you think God said, raise your hands in the sanctuary? What, 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 what does that show? Say that again. Praise. What else does it show? Adoration. What else? Reverence, reverence, and awe. See, all those are appropriate. But then I thought, what example can I give the Sabbath school in Sabbath school that represents raising your hands in the sanctuary? So I thought about parents who have children. Anybody had kids, right? What happened when they were small? When they get tired and they don't know what else to do, what do they do? They come to your feet, right? And then what do they do? They raise their hands. What does raising their hands mean? It means I'm submitting to you, mama. I don't care what you do once you lift me up. I'm saying when you lift me up, I'm willing to be in your arms and no matter where you take me, because when you pick that child up, he don't know where you're taking him. But out of trust, he's saying, Mom, if you take me to the right, it doesn't matter. I'm in your arms, I'm going to trust you. When you take me to the left, I'm in your arms, I'm going to trust you. So God is saying, when you are in the church and you are lifting up your hands, it's representation saying, Lord, I give my all to you. Wherever you take me, I'm going to trust you. And that's why we just lift our hands in praise. Because we trust God that he's going to take care of us no matter where we go. Then when we look at Monday's lesson, it talks about singing a new song. And this one is kind of interesting. So can somebody read Psalms 33.3? I'd ask somebody read 33.3. 3. It says, 
Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. Sing a new song. Shout for joy. Psalms 43. Psalm 40 verse 3 reads, He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. So it says he has put what in his heart? Not just the song, but what? A new song. And the word new has relevance. Because when you're reading the text, what does a new song mean to you? Somebody, anybody. What does a new song mean to them? This is Sabbath school. See, in Sabbath school, it's not just the person up front talking. In Sabbath school, there's some dialogue, give and take. Okay, so, so let's not match up the culture of Sabbath school. Let's get some dialogue. Elder Jones. All right, singing a new song means one that's never been sung before, not even by me. One that's never been sung before. Can I get one other? Say that again. Fresh mercy. Fresh mer I like that. Fresh mercy. Y'all want to hear what I think? See, y'all so quiet, I don't know if y'all want to hear, y'all want closing prayer. But they haven't told me yet, so you got to hear. All right, what I think about a new song, and that just comes from me reading this week, is a new song means a new experience. See, God's saying, you can't keep coming to church with the same old song, same old experience that you had 10 years ago. Sister Smith gave a testimony in 1915. And last night, you heard the same testimony. Sister Smith, haven't you had a new experience in the past 10 years? A new song says it's time for us to have a new experience between us and the Lord. It means a new song, a new experience, a new commitment. It means something I haven't sung last week. I got in contact with the Lord this week, and because of that, I can sing a different song. But if I haven't gotten to God this week, I'm still singing the old song of last week. So God's saying when you come to church, you should have a new song. Let's, 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 let's look at Psalms and we look at David. Look how many songs, y'all know Psalms are songs, right? So look at David. If he only had one experience or one song, we wouldn't have all these verses in the Bible. It's because David continually had what? A new song. Brother Teacher, um, sometimes though the new song is birthed over years. And so it takes years and years and years for you to have those experiences. And then finally it's birthed into something that you can present it as a new song. So sometimes people, in, we, we may think people in the church are saying the same thing over and over again. But with each year and with each different experience, it births a reprise to the song or something new to it. That's, that's a good point. In other words, we might have a song that started 10 years ago. But during that 10 years, we still had the same song, even though we had new experiences, but the gut of the song stayed the same. But Lord is saying we should still add a new verse. It might not be the whole song, but we could at least upgrade to another verse. Sing a chorus. 
Does that, does that make sense? See, see, some of you who don't know, I'm going off point here just a little bit. Some of you all here who don't know, somebody has a comment. Go ahead. I just wanted to say that the, uh, when I think about David and his songs, his psalms, his testimonies, he was willing to share them. And that's the difference a lot of times. We, people have these new things, but for some reason, they're reluctant to share that. Amen. And that's why God talked about us going into where? The congregation. Because that's where you do what? Share the new songs between unbelievers. All right, I'm going to move on real quick. But I, 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 I need one more thing read. Revelation 14, 1 through 3. That's, 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 that, that, that's right here. My blessing's going to sing, going to, going to, going to, going to read that. My praise is going to ring that. Then I looked, and there before me was the Lamb, standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a sound from heaven like the roar of rushing waters and like a loud peal of thunder. The sound I heard was like that of the harpists playing their harps. And they sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. No one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. Ah, oh, you get that? Nobody, not even angels, could sing the songs of who? The redeemed. Because they had an experience that others just did not have. See, sometimes when we come to church and I give my blessing and my song, sometimes you can't sing my song. You haven't had my experience. I can't sing your song. I haven't had your experience. So that text is saying because they had the experience of the redeem, not even the angels can sing your song because your song and praises to God is personal. And I'm going to sing, I mean, not sing. I'm going to say one last thing before we sit down, and that is, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? And that's coming from Psalms 15. So, so give, give, give me a second. Psalms 15. So before I get to this text, who do you think can abide in the tabernacle? Who you think can abide in the tabernacle? Anybody? You said God? No, besides God. The pre who? The righteous. That 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 that's what I'm looking at. Psalms 15. It says here, bear with me. Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live in your holy mountain? But listen, listen what it says. The one whose walk is blameless. Who does what is righteous? Who speaks the truth? from their heart, whose tongue utter no slander. Let, let, let me stop there. It is saying a lot of people come in the church, in the church, in the sanctuary. But God is saying the praises that are pure are those who praise with a clean heart, righteous, unblameless, it, it, it says, one thing I, I like here, it says, 
Those whose tongue utter no slander. See, that's, that's here, biblical. How many of us come to church? Well, it might not have been you. might not have been you. You just heard it outside the church. And you heard Sister Smith. I hope nobody here named Miss Smith. I, 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 it's just easy for me. I, I don't mean nobody in here named Miss Smith, okay? That's, that's just an example. All right? So say Miss Smith. You walk by Miss Smith and you heard her talking about Deacon Jones like a dog outside of church. Then you walk in church, the music playing, Miss Smith stands up, raises her hands, and just praising God. God says that is not real praise. The Bible talks about those who praise for show and those who praise out of true commitment and salvation. See, but sometimes we like to judge and think we know who is who. So we might have one, two people praising God, both up standing with their hands up. The truth is one is giving true praise, one is giving praise to their self, and you in the middle trying to judge. God says that is not your business, who or why or how I praise. You praise the way you praise, and let them praise the way they praise and let God be the judge. How many times we see people walking around and you hear so and so, that's so funny. Am I the only one that heard that now? We're judging somebody else's praise. But then when it comes to you, how they know what I've been through? They don't know what I've been through. You don't know what they've been through. So praise has to be sincere. It has to be relevant. It has to worship. is saying worship that never ends. So I'm going to end it right there because of time. I ran a little over, but we started a little late. And I don't think there's a problem when we're worshiping. Yeah. All right, so is there anybody that just want to give their closing remarks of what they got out of this short Sabbath school lesson? Anybody can give their closing remarks of what they got. Be sincere with your worship. Be sincere with your worship. One other thing. Anybody else? Well, I got one right here. One and one. It's no matter. You had your hand up. I don't know when I'm going to have the chance to do this, but I want to praise the parents who have lent their students to Pine Forge Academy. Amen. 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 I have one more right here. Test it's on. Yes. It, yes, from some of what you said, I am thinking as a good Seventh-day Adventist, <clears throat> my knee jerk when someone asks me, what is the day of worship? My knee jerk must be, we must worship God every day. Anything else you have to add comes after, but that must be the foundation. Amen. Amen. Worship is what? Never ending. Let's pray. Well, I have one more and then we're going to have closing prayer. I just can't wait to join in and sing the song that nobody can sing but us. Amen. We're going to have closing prayer. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to praise you. We know we have opportunities day in and day out, and we fail to praise you during those opportunities. But because of this lesson, we pray that you will give us the mindset, the heart, the know-how, how to praise you continually, even among unbelievers. We pray that you will bless us, bless this weekend, bless the parents, and bless this school. This is my prayer, in Jesus' name, amen.
Good morning, Pine Forge Church. And happy Sabbath to all of you. Happy Parents Weekend to our viewers. We're grateful that you can join us for this, which is one of our high Sabbaths of the year. Before we begin our worship service, there are a few announcements I need to share with our congregation and our viewers. As mentioned before, this is Parent Weekend. We're grateful to have as our speaker for this Sabbath, Pastor Dwayne Prevett of the Calvary Seventh-day Adventist Church in Newport News, Virginia. We're looking forward to him. This evening's senior presentation is scheduled for six o'clock this evening and our featured speaker is Chaplain Robert Peters III. Do come early. Come when? Early. Not on time. Early. We expect a full house. Um, also, just a bit of advice. It's going to be raining throughout the day. Those who have chosen to park on the grass, be careful how you get out. All right? Enough said. Moving on. We're pleased that uh, the Academy will be entering into spring break as of Sunday. The parents are here to take their beloved children home. And we trust that uh, you will enjoy the week off. Look forward to seeing you the Monday following as you leave, but spring break is from March 24th through April the 1st. I regret to be able to share with you that uh, we've had a bereavement in our Academy family. Sister Bertha Louise Swanson, who was the beloved mother of Sister Demetria Fielder, uh, mother-in-law of Elder Chris Fielder, passed away the week prior. Her funeral service was yesterday in Detroit, Michigan. And of course, we extend our love and our condolences and our prayers to the Fielder family in the loss of their beloved mother. Our church is the sponsor not only of Pine Forge Academy, but we have an elementary school, Jesse L. Wagner Adventist Elementary School. There is a call town hall meeting for tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock here in the church fellowship hall. We are informing the constituents of both constituent churches, the Pine Forge Church, and the Walnut Street Community Seventh-day Adventist Church in Pottstown that please assemble here a little before 10 o'clock in the morning as there are some vital pieces of information that need to be shared. We are looking, honestly, ladies and gentlemen, into some difficult decisions, and so please be here for an opportunity of the school board to share some important information with you. Uh, following that town hall meeting, we anticipate the churches will call their own separate business meetings and after that, we'll schedule an actual constituency session for our elementary school. 
On next Sabbath, we'll be celebrating communion here at Pine Forge Church. We want to make sure our members are making preparation for this most sacred event. And we're looking forward to doing that on Sabbath. The Connection and Ministry Communication Conference, sponsored by Attica East Conference, is scheduled for April 26th through 28th. Those intending to attend are requested to uh, register now. Uh, if you go to the conference's website, visit aec.org forward slash camcom, you will find the opportunity to register early there. I want to remind our viewers as well as our guests that there are four ways in which to give to the Pine Forge Church. Of course, those who are here in person, the offering will be collected in person. But if you're watching online, you can send your offering, your tithe and offering to AdventistGiving.org. There's an electronic envelope there. It is free. It's electronic. That's the simplest way to do it. If you prefer using Cash App, our Cash App address is dollar sign PFC donations, plural. For those preferring PayPal, you will find us at, at Pine Forge Church. And if you wish to mail a check or donation, for this week, and likely this week is the last week to do so, our Pine Forge Post Office Box is Post Office Box 86, Pine Forge, Pennsylvania, 19548. Beginning in April, we anticipate using our street address as our mailing address, and that also is a new address. We'll announce that on next Sabbath. But we are now going to be formally listed as a part of the Boyertown Municipality as opposed to Pine Forge, and we'll explain that a little bit later on now. But at least you still have the four ways to give. Some birthday greetings. Happy birthday to Sister Jacqueline O'Brien, who is also part of the conference uh, staff. Happy birthday to Sister Audrey Booker. We love to call her grandma. We know they're watching every week. Happy birthday to you and many, many more. Happy birthday to our first elder, Cynthia Poole, who celebrated this week. And a couple of anniversaries to our vice principal and her husband, Clifton. Happy anniversary. 19 years together. And we have for Elder Lewis and Barbara Manning, 33 years. Happy anniversary to you. The sun will set today. Our Sabbath will end at 717. We expect, of course, to be here already and service will have been started. So we're grateful that you're here. Let us celebrate the Lord and worship in spirit and in truth. But I do have two last minor things. I was just giving a notification. If you are the owner of a gray Mazda, Virginia plate UKK 4110. Again, a gray Mazda, Virginia plate UKK 4110. You left your car on. You might want to tend to that. You will notice in the congregation there are approximately four air filters. Please resist the temptation to turn those off. We need those. Amen? Amen. You know why. So if it's that much of an annoyance, then I would simply consult. We'd ask you to kind of just leave, find another place. But please leave the air filters alone and leave them on. Thank you so much. With that, let us now then from the beginning of our worship service, I'm going to ask Sister Cheryl Williams and the Williams family to lead us in our call to worship this morning. Welcome. Good morning. Happy Sabbath, church. My name is Giancy Williams, and I'm a part of the class of 2026. This is my mother, Cheryl Williams, and my father, Michael Williams, and we'll be doing the call to worship. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be today? God has been good to us, and we are indeed grateful. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. For in God's house, you will find peace. In God's house, 
there is also deliverance because the potter wants to put us back to gather again. Come and let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Pine Forge Academy, it's not about me and it's not about you, but it's all about the kingdom. Have yourselves a wonderful and blessed Sabbath day. Let us stand for opening prayer, please. Father, we are grateful for the privilege one more time of worship. In your grace, you woke us this morning. You made sure that we found something to eat, something to wear. You brought us safely, you conducted us safely to this tabernacle. And even those who are not here physically, they are joining us in the tabernacle of time we know as the Sabbath. God, look down in mercy upon your people. Holy Spirit, drench us anew. May we rejoice in your presence, thanking you for what you have done, will do, and are doing for your people. Accept the offering of our praise, we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Please be seated. I'm going to ask Sister Angela Pitt, if you are with us, if you would please come forward and make your presentation at this time. Forge Academy. We are so excited to be here. Uh, it's bittersweet though, but it's exciting. Uh, this is our school, all of us, our school, and we always want to keep the love flowing for this school. Uh, we in the class of 80 experience the worst tragedy that ever happened at Pine Forge. We lost a classmate on this campus uh, right in front of Kimbrough Hall. Uh, it happened April 1, 1980. That is a difficult day for us even still. Um, and the lounge at Kimbrough Hall was named after our classmate. Erica Taylor, because she was so instrumental in being a part of this campus. She was a four-year student. She loved Pine Forge. She came here from Dayton, Ohio. Anybody here from Ohio? Yeah. All, all right, all right now. She came from Dayton, Ohio, and, uh, she, but she made that trip every, every year for four years, loved the school. She was full of school spirit. She was uh, the captain of the pep team. She was just full of school spirit and just wanted to have, let everybody know about Pine Forge. And so we were excited that they named the, school, the lounge after her, but some years later we said, you know what? We want to make sure that people now know who Erica is. So as a class we got together, and she was an honor student, um, we wanted the people now to know about Erica. So we came to the deans and said, could you all please choose a young lady that exemplifies the spirit of Erica Taylor. Because we want the students now, when they go in that lounge, to not, it's not just their lounge. It is a lounge that is in honor of somebody who was very, very special to this school. And we asked if, if, if that could be something we could do yearly. So that is something that we've been doing now over a decade. Can you all want you to say something? Thank you. 
Uh, this uh, award is to a young lady who she mentioned because the thing about Erica, she was a four-year student and her parents, who were not Adventists, mm -hmm. sent her here for four years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you would think that after a non-Adventist child mm -hmm. died on the campus of Pine Forge, mm -hmm. that she would hold hard feelings. Mm -hmm. But because of the way Erica embraced Pine Forge, her parents also embraced Pine Forge, even unto death. Mm -hmm. So it is amazing of the spirit of Erica, which passed to her parents. Mm -hmm. That's why we would like to give this award to a worthy student from Kimbrough Hall. And also, speaking of Kimberly before Ramona speaks, she was my roommate. We, our, our room, our senior year is 205. So whoever, whoever was in room 205, I want you to come to me and say hi, because that room is forever special. That, that room was um, mine and Erica's. Can you say something? No, no, no. no. It's time. Go on. Go on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, though Erica... Uh, passed away, I'm what's considered the survivor of that accident. And I take that very personal because it could have been me. And um, so I vowed in my heart after sending my children here and walking past that dorm every, I had uh, two daughters that attended and lived in Kimbrough and my son, but when my youngest daughter came it was three of us from the class of 80 that had children here. And we would stand under her picture in the uh, lobby and say, you know, we need to do something. I said, I need to give back because God has been so good to me and I can now send my children here. So we, like um, Angela said, we, we want, went to the dean and said, you know what, we need someone to exemplif who exemplifies her character, her home away from home attitude, because she was here more than she was at home during her high school years. So speaking with the dean, she said this year, our recipient should go to Deja Crawford. In behalf of Deja's twin, he's going to accept the scholarship. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. You got to say something on her behalf. Uh, on the behalf of my sister, I want to say I'm very proud of you, Deja. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'll just let you know. This will go to the school. This is for her. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Take care. <laughs> Good morning. Our next presenter this morning, uh, we have two. And these are two important pieces. I'm going to ask the Alumni Association reps to come first. And then right after them, we will have our representative from Oakwood University. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. To Principal Reynolds, Pastor Richardson, and all those gathered here today, I'm J. Alfred Johnson III, class of 1993. I am also standing here as chaplain of the National Pine Forge Academy Alumni Association, so I bring greetings and kind regards on behalf of our president, Mr. Sacconi Scott. I was asked to just come and say a word as an alumni, also as a parent of what it means to have a journey and a story 
here at Pine Forge Academy. And real quick, uh, there's a song that we love to sing that says it only takes a spark to get a fire going. And the spark that led to me being a part of the Pine Forge Academy journey and story actually began on September 9, 1946. Because on these very grounds, on that day, the history books tell us that was the first day of class for Pine Forge Academy. And my uncle, Kelly Leon Johnson, was among the students that were here on that first day. In our family, we speak and now think of loving memory for Uncle Leon, who we buried on last year. But the spark that he ignited was passed on to my Aunt Barbara, who graduated in, he graduated in the class of 1949. My Aunt Barbara graduated in the class of 1959. My father graduated in the class of 1969. My mother graduated in the class of 1970. I had a cousin that graduated in the class of 2010 and other cousins along the way. And my wife and I are parents of students in the class of 2024 and 2025. So I just want to encourage anyone who's listening and watching that you never know what you will spark in your family that will go from generation to generation, but most of all, make a difference for the kingdom of God. Amen. My name is Janice Patterson Vanderhorst, and I'm from the class of 1976. And my, my classmate, Pastor Richardson. <laughs> okay. I stand here as co-chair of the Evening of Excellence Benefit Concert. How many of you have heard of that yet? Okay. This concert will be given by our very own Academy Choir. Creative Arts and Choir will be ministering on May 4th at Miracle City SEA Church in Baltimore, where Pastor Noah Washington is the pastor. Oh yes, oh yes. It will be a benefit concert. We are so excited because the second half of this concert will be a live recording, a live recording of something new. Something new is the unique, unique uh, um, presentation that if you were here last Parent Weekend, we went over to the gym and we saw them perform. Well, that will be a live recording on that Saturday evening. Now, you heard me say it was a benefit concert. We are on a mission to recruit for Pine Forge Academy. And to that end, we are raising scholarships for students and seniors. And I'm going to briefly tell you the scholarships that we are um, raising a PFA academic scholarship in the amount of $40,000. This will target those who demonstrate excellence in, the cat in academics. These are for new students. PFA athletic scholarship in the amount of $40,000 for a student who demonstrates excellence in academic, athletics, excuse me. A leadership scholarship in the amount of $40,000 for a student who demonstrates excellence in leadership. A music scholarship, $40,000, who will target those in excellence in music, a STEM scholarship for those who demonstrate excellence in the STEMs, and $50,000 $50, for uh, graduating seniors. We haven't named any of the scholarships yet, but we are looking forward to honoring our long-serving faculty and impactful alumni of the Academy. We will be blessed with special guests and other surprises throughout the evening. So please share this with your churches, your families and friends, and please join us to cheer our children on on May 4th. And before I end, I'd like to quickly give you a piece of history. When you check the records, it appears that sweaters, the sweaters that our seniors so proudly wear, and myself, can be traced back to the 40s and 50s. Then they became extinct. The class of 76 decided to bring the sweaters back. All right now. All right. As you see, we used our class colors, which were burgundy and cream, but su subsequent classes used white and accented with their class colors, which was very smart. So I'd like to say you, uh, we are very proud to have been that class to initiate that, and we say you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
Good morning, Pine Forge, and happy Sabbath. My name is Dr. Lewis Jones, and I am the Director of Enrollment for Oakwood University. I am so happy to be here, and I have with me the recruiter for this area, Ms. Chakota Smith. Where are you, Chakota? Okay, she's somewhere in the building. But we're happy to be here today. This is only my second trip to Pine Forge. I was here uh, back in February with the Aeolians, and uh, what a time. And I particularly enjoyed that final number where uh, those of Pine Forge sang with the Aeolians. Let me just say to you this morning, we're here on a mission. We, we're here on a mission. You've got questions, I've got answers. You don't have to listen to the tabloids or social media. You've got somebody here today. If you've got questions, I've got answers. And I have money. Never let money be the reason why you don't come to Oakwood. No, I'm here to set the record straight. Never let money be the reason why you don't come to Oakwood. Don't think Oakwood doesn't have your major. Don't sleep on our engineering program. I know it's a 3-2 program, and we have a partnership with the University of Huntsville, and you do three years at Oakwood and two years over there, and you come out with two degrees, but we've got so many individuals that have graduated in that engineering program, and they want to talk to you. They've got big jobs, making big six-figure salaries. In fact, the program is so successful until the University of Huntsville says, we prefer your students over our students. Don't sleep on medical programs either. Whether dentistry or just regular medical school, we have nine MOUs with medical schools, and at the end of your second year at Oakwood, what year did I say? At the end of your second year, you can be accepted into medical school. That, wait a minute, y'all sound like that happens every day. That doesn't happen anywhere else in America. You can be accepted into medical school at the end of your second year at Oakwood. Nine of them. That doesn't happen anywhere. Of course you still have to take the MCAT, of course. Come on now. Of course you still have to take the MCAT, but you can be accepted. And our first class, we started this three years ago, our first class is in medical school right now. Yeah. Last one, and I'm gonna get out your way, Pastor Richardson. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Y'all know music. Where you gonna go? I mean, for real. Do, do you know Pine Forge? After Pine Forge, where you gonna go? Oakwood. Nine, Acad nine Academy Awards this year. Nine. Nine Grammys. Y'all act like that happened every day. I don't know of one school with one. We had nine. What I'm trying to say is, if you are looking for excellence, Oakwood is the place. If you're looking to foster, you sent your kids to Pine Forge, not because it was cheap. You didn't send them to Pine Forge because they taught reading, writing, and arithmetic. They could have got that anywhere. 
but you sent them to Pine Forge, many of you, because there's a legacy here, and the rest of you, you sent them here because you want them to fall in love with Jesus. Oakwood is a place where you can fall in love with Christ and foster that relationship, amen? So as I close, I say a bottle of water can be 50 cents at the supermarket, $2 at the gym, $3 at the movies, and $6 on a plane. Same water. The only thing that changed its value was the place. So the next time you feel your worth is less than, Maybe you're in the wrong place. Come to Oakwood. I don't know that I can follow that. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to Pine Forge Church. Do me a favor as we get ready to be a little interactive with our welcome, turn to your neighbor on your left and say, Happy Sabbath. <laughs> Wonderful. Turn to that neighbor on the right and say, Happy Sabbath. And I'll leave you with this thought. On the river Manitani, where the hills are rolling green, Meet the light of heavens through the tall, majestic, where my heart is ever and my face is often. That is where my alma mater reigns as queen. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. As we ask you to stand and greet your neighbor, quick announcement, CA, young people, your, your director needs to see you. Otherwise, find somebody, give them a hug, and say happy Sabbath. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. It's so easy, so easy, so easy, so easy to love. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. It's so easy, so easy. The Jesus in you, the Jesus in me, loves the Jesus in you. It's so easy, so easy, so easy, oh, so easy to love. The Jesus in me, loves the Jesus in you, the Jesus in me, he loves the Jesus in you. It's so easy. Jesus in you, the Jesus in me, he loves the Jesus in you. It's so easy, so easy, so easy, so easy, so easy to
Ah, uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. I am Principal Reynolds, Headmaster of Pine Forge Academy. In everything, give God thanks. Today I am thankful for all God has done in my life and through my leadership here at Pine Forge Academy. I've been so proud to be the principal and headmaster of an incredible institution with an incredible staff, brilliant students, and amazing parents. We have truly been through the fire the floods, <laughs> the pandemic, power outages, <laughs> storms, rain, and all the other stuff. <laughs> However, the tough times aren't celebrated without those great victories that make them so sweet. We have won 11 Film Festival Awards, the YPBS Gospel Contest, the Nationwide Jingle, the Penn Jersey League Championship Basketball. God has truly been good. We have renovated the basketball courts and the girls basketball courts and renovated the biology lab and the chemistry lab. We have renovated the dormitories equipped with new dorm room furniture. We can't thank AEC enough for what they have done for us. And at last, we have baptized over 40 students here at Pine Forge. So I want to thank parents for believing in my leadership and partnering with me in Christian education. We have been through some tough times, but we have had so many victories. I love when we can laugh and look back on each and every one of your children that have come through the corridors of Pine Forge. I have laughed with each and every one of you. We have had some tough conversations, but we have laughed and we have had a good time. But there's one parent I want to um, say, a couple of parents I want to say thank you to. Now I've had three parent association presidents and I want to thank each and every one of them they've all brought something special to the table so thank you for that and now I definitely want to thank Rachel Pluvios for just being simply amazing listen she's the president she's the senior class parent president She's the recruiter, she's the event planner, the travel agent, and more. Rachel, thank you so much for all you have done. But there's one parent I must thank more than any other. She has been my partner. My lover my friend along with all <clears throat> get myself together <sighs> my do everything and anything with partner she's been your COVID response team member Your physician 
when this uh, when staff when the cases were really high she's been that person she's been the Cepheid monitor, you know, when y'all got your PCS, PCR test, she was that person for the state, for us. Um, she has been the check-in person, the nurse, the support nurse when the students pass out during the choir concerts. <laughs> On call physician at night. Now van driver to the cotillion practices, chaperone, junior senior event assistant. <laughs> and she's been Karis and Hayden, who I believe are two amazing students from Pine Forge Academy. None other than my wife, Dr. Charlize Wallington Reynolds. So we just want to give you just a little something, just some flowers. All right, have your money. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right. All right, I'm almost done. It's been five years. I want to thank the staff for simply being my prayer partners, my do everything and anything team, my vision supporters, my laughing buddies, and most of all, recently, my health monitors. Mr. Reynolds, you're not supposed to eat that. Now, you know I'm going to tell your wife. <laughs> They've just been simply fantastic. You don't get paid enough. You don't get thanked enough. You're not appreciated enough. And you do so much. So if I can have the staff, please, of you who are here, please stand up. And last but certainly not least, I want to thank the students for being one of the best student bodies that I have ever been a part of in my 28 years of education. You are truly the best. You are intelligent, mature beyond your years, and also silly. I must add greedy, because you eat up, you eat up all my candy and chocolates every day. But I just enjoy seeing you smile. I enjoy seeing you worship. I enjoy seeing when you let God come into your life. I enjoy seeing the light bulbs go off in Mr. Ritchie's class when I walk in the room. I enjoy seeing all of you who I tell you need to put on your uniform. But beyond the uniform, I love you. <laughs> so, 
there have been steep mountains that we have climbed and valleys that we have gone through. But know this more than anything. Don't settle for less. Keep excellence at the forefront. Keep God first and choose your friends wisely. And make sure that you wear Pine Forge Academy proud. And know again that I truly love you and I simply just want to say thank you. Sabbath Pine Forge. I don't know if that did that justice. Has God been good? Yes. He brought you here today safely. Amen. He allowed each and every one of these parents to keep on paying that tuition. Amen. So happy Sabbath Pine Forge. Okay, much better. Welcome to Parent Weekend. I am Rachel Pluvios. For those of you who don't know, I am the current president of the Parent Association, and it is my pleasure and honor to see each and every single one of you here today. It's raining outside, but that's just a reminder of how God is showering us with his many, many blessings. The Spirit truly is in this place. I want to extend a heartfelt thank you to the incredible teachers and staff Guys, come on. They do so much for us and for our babies. Thank you so much for looking after them day after day. To the amazing alumni and board members who work so hard to continue that PFA legacy, we see you and we are grateful for your efforts. And to the parents who are persevering day after day through another school year, paying tuition, dealing with the phone calls, the cafeteria food isn't great, this teacher is getting on my nerves, son or daughter, when are you turning in that assignment? Keep on with God. You've got this by his grace. And last but not least, to the wonderful students, Y'all, these students work so amazingly hard. They work hard on academics and sports and choir and campus jobs and USM and class offices and the list goes on and on. If anyone has ever been here for Academy Day and to see the amount of students who just like quickly change out of one outfit to another because they are a part of so many things, students, we see you and are in awe of you and all that you do. Don't think we ever, ever do not appreciate all your efforts and hard work. Let's give it up for our students. <laughs> and stay encouraged. May will be here soon, sooner than you think. May is right around the corner, so stay encouraged. <laughs> we are almost at the end of an unprecedented school year. Last Parent Weekend, I mentioned how God uses the few to accomplish mighty things. We've seen him do just that this school year. We went from cabins to renovated dorms, amen? We came from behind, not just a few, but double-digit points to win a basketball championship, amen? The choir continues to gain accolades and creative art advances their ministry. This few, with God's help, has done mighty, mighty things parents, we also accomplished much this second semester. I'd like to ask the executive committee of the Parent Association to stand at this time. Come on, Come on stand up, stand up. Yeah. Amen. This is the team that makes the magic happen. You can be seated now. 
As a parent association, we continue to partner with the Academy. We ensured that all the juniors have access to SAT prep. Amen? We have provided privacy curtains for the shower stalls in the dorms. Amen. <laughs> we co-sponsored brunch with your profession at Hansi Hall. Amen, amen, Hansi Hall gentlemen. And we also donated 10 graphing calculators to the math department. Amen. So we continue to look for ways that we can work with the school to support their efforts on behalf of our children. Now I'm going to take a little commercial break-ish. As I stand here this Sabbath morning, my heart is heavy and joyful at the same time. Our seniors are about to graduate. Now, I would be remiss if I did not take a moment to address this class, if that's okay with y'all. As a proud mom and parent coordinator for the Perspicacious Class of 24, here we go. I am in awe of your accomplishments and incredulous that the time has flown so quickly. I will truly miss each and every one of you. You have indelibly woven yourselves into the fabric of what makes Pine Forge Academy so great and left a tall, mighty tall legacy of high achieving academics, respectful demeanor, mustard seed faith, and enduring grace. You truly exemplify how black excellence is no accident. So remember your time here, the lessons taught, and seek God's favor in all things. Give it up for the class of 24. They're just truly amazing. So, so I hope that everyone will enjoy the rest of this weekend. We were able to put together a parents' choir. Amen. Thank you, Cynthia Prevet, for that idea. Look at her face. <laughs> We've got a parents' praise team, which continues to bless us. And I know that as we leave here on Sunday and we take our babies home for a much-needed break, we will depart here being blessed and thankful for this truly special place. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It's time for children's story. As the children are preparing to come, our deacons are actually going to pick up our children's offering for us today. So deacons, if you'll get moving and young people, let's find a spot for you. All right. CA is just about ready. Sing with me. Jesus loves a little tree. in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves church family. Happy Sabbath PFA family. Creative Arts would like to give a shout out to all of our eight Academy students who got baptized last night. Can you please stand up? Can you please stand up? Where are you? Are you here? There you go, McKenny. Where are There you go. So this story is dedicated to them. For we also have new Christians. Would you like to meet them? Yeah. 
Would you like to meet them, children? Uh, church, would you like to meet them? Yeah. yeah, improv is special. All right, new Christians, come on down and take a microphone. We even have one on crutches. Oh, mercy. You good? Amen. The devil is a liar. Let's go. Move up a little bit. All right. Congratulations on your new and exciting journey with Jesus Christ. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Now we also have other church board members who want to congratulate you. Is that all right? Yes. All right, so church board members, come on down. Let's give it up for our church board members. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. That's pretty much all you have to say every single Sabbath. Yes. It doesn't matter how bad your week was. For example, if you failed the test in school, or if you got in a fight with one of your close friends, or, or even if someone, someone close to you died. Wait, wait what? Uh-oh. As long as you say, happy Sabbath, you're a real Christian. Why? Why? Because God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Amen. You can never let the devil see you sweat. Happy Sabbath. Good job. Now, now remember, remember that. that. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Children, happy Sabbath. Everybody, happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's whoa. wrong, Alex? I love the energy. The delivery was amazing, what but was it just seemed... Fake. Oh, no. Exactly. Like, why should I have to fake my happiness for Jesus? Oh. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. It seems kind of unreal. Oh. They didn't even seem happy when they were telling us this information. <laughs> yeah, what they said. Yeah, I get it. Especially the part when they said, or even if someone close to you dies. But guys, we believe in Jesus Christ, and we know that they're sleeping in Jesus, right? So let's just practice mourning him, knowing that we'll be reunited with our loved ones. But I don't want to. Let's just practice. Let's go. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy. Why are you smiling? Huh? Oh, no. Attention. Yes, yes sir. sir. There is absolutely nothing that is happy about your Sabbath if you're not taking it seriously. I'm serious. What God did for you on that cross is no smiling matter. You must never be at ease. Okay. That is how the devil gets you. That's true. This is war, and you are a soldier in God's army. Understand? Yes, yes sir. sir. Attention. Yes, sir. Attention. Yes, sir. Are they gone? Yeah, they're, they're on their way out. Are you, are you guys okay? I don't want to no. be here no more. Oh. I did not come to church for this. Oh, no, guys. I'm so sorry, but don't you want to be a soldier in God's army? No. no yes, you really. do. You do. There's a war out there. Toughen up. So practice. Attention. Yes, sir. Attention. Yes, sir. Attention. Yes, sir. Oh, guys, relax. This ain't the Marines. Thank God. Y'all can say that again. Thank, Thank God. God. No one's going to believe you're a follower of Christ when you're acting like that. Okay. If you want to attract people to church, you got to be attractive. You mean like, like be cute? Like I don't understand. Like I'm... Basically. Oh. In other words, be cool with your Christianity. When you see your friends doing something wrong, mm -hmm. don't, don't judge them. Join them. No. Really? No, no, no. Nah, I'm not nah, going to nah. lie. I like that. Trust I mean, me. Because no. that's how you gain their trust. You know, you just, just be easy with it. Be cool with it. So, do mm. you do like a dance or something? Be cool with it. Uh, be cool with it. Be cool with it. Alright, let's go down. Be cool with it. I'm cool with it. Be cool with it. I'm cool with it. Be cool with it. I'm cool with it. Be cool with it. Wait, wait. What? What? I'm cool. Yo, the, the elders, they, they looking at us. Yeah. Sorry, guys. We don't, I don't think we're supposed to be doing that. Really? 
No. Oh, well, well, guys, since COVID, your generation has left the church. So don't you want to track them back in? I, I, I know, think but I feel way. like the Bible never said anything about being cool with our Christianity. Like, I, I, yeah, I don't think we're supposed to be dancing while we're up here. Yeah, but it's not even fair. I can't dance on my crutches. Yeah, uh, that, that part. Can, can we just at least like practice? Come on, at least say it. Be cool with it. I'm cool with it. Be cool with it. I'm cool with it. Be cool with it. I'm cool with it. Do you think you are? Oh. At some kind of rap concert? Recognize that this is holy ground. What, what do, do we, we do, do this now? time? I am so sorry, guys. You must think, act, and most definitely look the part. Put your hands together. Come on, Make go. sure that your clothing is appropriate. No name brands. Oh. And your clothing must cover your entire body. Ladies, ladies, ladies. Never show skin. Okay. We don't need you tempting others into unchristlike behavior outside we don't of need marriage. That. Amen. No, we don't need that. No makeup. Oh. Nail polish. Whoa. Jewelry. What? Tattoos. Mm -mm. Hair extensions. Mm. Hair coloring. Whoa. Dreads. What you trying to say? And worldly haircuts. Thou shalt also attend church seven days a week. Seven, seven days. days! And twice on Saturdays. That's a lot. You must be Thou shalt also give us all your money. How am I supposed to feed my family? Oh, I'm an Adventist teacher. I, I, all your money. Come on. There's a health message, right? All right, our health message. Thanks for that. Sorry, guys. So, for the first three months of every year, drink only water. Only water. What about my Sprite? Oh no, just just water. My lemonade? Uh, no, water, water. Girl, Girl I just saw you eating chicken this morning. And for the remaining nine months of Lemon every year, you must follow the Daniel diet. Daniel diet? That's just lettuce. You need to remember. It's just lettuce. Yeah, that's what it is. Remember, your body is the temple of the Lord. Right. Therefore, you yeah. are holy, holy. Holy. We are holy. Holy. holy Everybody, holy. we are holy. Holy. Even if it kills us. We are holy. 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 We are. Stop. Oh, Cut Alex. the show. Oh, whoa, whoa. Cut the show. What's wrong? What, what's wrong? Mm. She told us all the things, and you have the nerve to ask me what's wrong? I'm so sorry. She came after my hair. I love your hair. I love your hair. I, I, I'm not doing this no more. I can't do it. Guys, guys. We need to practice sanctification. It's going to take some time. At least practice. Take some time. Yes, it is. But practice saying holy, holy, and maybe the Holy Spirit will do something. But she isn't even practicing sanctification. But let's just try it. Let's go. Children are looking at us. We are holy, holy, holy. We are holy, holy, holy. We are holy. Happy Sabbath. Yes, sir. I'm cool with it. We are holy, holy, holy. Man, I got to be a happy Christian. A militant Christian. A cool Christian. And a religious Christian all at the same time. At this point, I feel like a confused Christian. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. It's more like a, a scared, scared Christian. Christian. Yeah. I love the baptism. It was great. Yeah. But it's great. I got food at the house, so I'm going to catch y'all next Sabbath. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. let us explain. Please, please. Wait, wait, hold on. Let's explain. Like, this won't take long, I promise you. Three minutes. Okay, that's all Yo, I need. Yo, someone set a timer for three minutes. No, no, no. Go. Uh, that's good. That's all I need. <clears throat> Look, I'm sure they all mean well, but they're just a bit off. A bit? Okay, okay way, way off. off. Yep. Okay, yeah, they do not listen to my sermons. Mm -mm. <laughs> Disgusting. All right, look. Being a follower of Christ is trusting and obeying his word. Mm -hmm. In other words, love God, love others. Serve God, serve others. It's just as simple as that. Got it? Yeah. Well, let's see what you got. So it's love, love God, God, love others. others. Yep. Serve God, God, serve others. That's right. Yep. Got, got it. And last but certainly not least, welcome to, to Creative, Creative Arts, Arts Church. Church. Cut. Cut. Okay. Can we?
we get a girl and a little boy to pray? A little girl and a little, a little, girl and a little boy to pray. Thank you for this day. Help us be good. Help us to have a great day. Help us to love you. Help us to always um, care for each other. And amen. 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 Is there a little boy who wants to pray? Dear Jesus, please help us to have a good day. And church, please help us to all be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, God bless you boys and girls, and have a great spring break. See you next time. Yay! morning Pine Forest Church. Would you all mind worshiping with us just a little bit this morning? He's playing a song that simply goes like this. Lead me, guide me along the way. I know that this morning. Come on, worship with us. Lord, each day said, so lead me Gonna sing that one more time. Come on, let's bless him in this place. Said, Why don't you lead me?
Hallelujah. Happy Sabbath. It's good to be at Pine Forge Parent Weekend one more time. Amen. Wasn't that a blessing? Doesn't that just fill your heart? I just want to share um, something that I read this week in the Sabbath school lesson, which I think is fitting. It says, although God dwells not in temples made with hands, yet he honors us with his presence. At the assemblies of his people, he has promised that when they come together to seek him, to acknowledge their sins, and to pray for one another, he will meet them with his spirit. The presence of the Lord is here. He is here to meet you with his spirit. Whatever you need this morning is in the room because God is here. His spirit is here. He has released his spirit. He's released his presence. He's released healing and deliverance and financial blessing. He is here in the room. Amen. God is here. Does anybody know what it means to be forsaken? That means to be abandoned, right? And I was reading it this morning about the definition of abandonment. And God never leaves us. And those are the words of the song. It says that God will never leave us. I am not forsaken. I'm never alone. All right. Okay, y'all. I'm not forsaken, ever alone. The God of heaven calls me his own. He'll never leave me on the throne. I'm not forsaken, never alone. Yes, you're deep in my heart. And when I need it, it won't depart. I have a Savior who calls on me. And I believe So I stand you in Come on, sing you out If I testify Bear with me with the lyrics Lion's mouth Go ask those Hebrew boys If he'll stick by your side And they will testify He's with you in the fire They'll tell him more He's in the room Give me some Clap with me, clap with me, clap with me. He tell him, oh, 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 he's in the room. Come on, come on. I've got a treasure here in my heart. And in my weakness, it won't depart. I have a Savior who will abide. He's not just with me. He lives inside. So go as Daniel lift. Our God will bring you out and he will testify. He shut the lion's mouth. Go ask those Hebrew boys. If he'll stack by your side, they will identify the fourth man in the fire. They'll tell you. Oh, Come on, come on. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. He's here, he's, he's in, in the room. room. Come on. Our God is here, so. Oh, oh, oh. He's here, oh, he's, he's in, in the room. room. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, oh, oh. He's in the room. Come on. Next words are going to say, 
If I search the heavens high, if I search the earth below, if I made my bed in hell, no matter where I go, he's in the room, y'all. All right, come on. Come on, let's go. If I search the heavens high, he's there. If I search the earth below, he's there. If I made my bed in hell, he's there. No matter where I go, he's there. Where could I from his spirit? Where could I go from his presence? He's there. No matter where I go, he's there. No matter where I go. If I search the heavens high, I search the earth below. Even if I make my bed in hell, God is always there. Where can I run from His presence? Where can I go from His spirit? No matter where I go, no matter where I go. If I search the heavens high, if I search the earth below. If I make my bed in hell, come on. No matter where I go. Come on, just sing it, just sing it, just sing it. Oh, 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 oh. oh he's in the room. That sounds nice. Just one more time. Come on, come on. That sounds really nice. Come on. Sing oh. Oh, 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 oh. He's in the room. One more time. One. Come on. Sing it. Oh, 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 oh. He's in the room. that is in the room amen amen and we also serve a god that won't fail you amen when you thought that bill wouldn't get paid we serve a god who won't fail you amen when you your car didn't start on the way to get here we serve a god that won't fail you amen when you didn't know how you were going to make it to the end of the semester to the end of the quarter we serve a god that won't fail you amen so in this song, we want you to sing it along with us. And the chorus just goes, he won't fail. He won't fail. He won't. Can you all do that with us? Amen.
I know we all been through something. So while we sing this, let's sing praises to the Lord. Amen. Don't do it. People don't do it. 
we have to go to our Father because He will do it. And that's how we know that everything, everything, He is everything to us. And so we call His name. He is our Father. He is our Savior. He is our Deliverer. And so right now, we're going to talk to Him. We're going to talk to our Father. So as you open your mouth, out of these words, sing, make a joyful noise. Make it one-on-one. One-on-one. And we're going to talk to our Father right now. Woo! See yourself bowing before the throne of God. Before the throne. He has, you have his attention. You have his attention. So right now, we're going to say, Jesus, you're everything to me. You're 
everything to me. Sometimes you gotta say it so much that you start to believe it. You're everything. Everything to me. Repeat it till the other thoughts just flood your mind or get rid of them. Everything to me. You're everything to me. Everything to me. And so I bow before the king. Mm, your posture. I bow before the king. He's the only one who can change circumstances. I bow before the king. Ooh, cause I know he's able. I bow before the king. Cause he's God and God alone. Sing with me. Cause he's God and God alone. Because he's God and God alone. God and God alone. He's God and God alone. He's God and God alone. God alone. He's God and God alone. So I worship before the throne. I worship before the throne. Go ahead and worship. I worship before the throne. I worship. I worship before the throne. I worship before the throne. I worship before the throne. He's the ruler of everything. 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 Because see, when he speaks, everything has to. The ruler of everything. When he speaks, even demons, demons have the to move. Ruler of everything. Woo! When you recognize that he's the ruler, ha! The ruler of everything. What else changes? When you recognize he's the ruler, the ruler of everything. And so I bow before the king. I bow before the king. Yes, God, I bow before the king. I bow before the king. So everything, everything, everything. everything. You're everything to me. Happy Sabbath, Pine Forge. Happy Sabbath. My name is Christoph White. And I'm Christina White. And this is my senior. From the Perspicacious class of 2024. Yeah. At this time, we will now present to you the intercessory prayer. We are in this place. And there is a sweet, sweet spirit in the air. And we can feel it. And because our Lord is everything to us, he's our Jehovah Rapha. That's God is our healer. And he's here. Jehovah Shalom. 
God of peace, and he's here. The mic, okay, sorry. Jehovah Roy, the God that sees. He's Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides. And he is here. I'm impressed by the Holy Spirit to invite anyone who may have a need if you are sick. We may not know it, and as well, we may know it also. We have financial burdens. We may be in distress. We may need the peace of God, and he's here. He's everything to us. We may need a father, a mother. God is everything. So if you are impressed and you have faith like a mustard seed and you want to touch the hem of his garment today, I invite you. I don't have the power, but God has the power. And if you believe that Jesus is here and is everything to you, you can raise your hand if you don't want to come. But if you feel like you want to touch the hem of his garment today, he's here. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that he's this reason of the Lord. There's a sweet expression on each face. God Almighty. How excellent is your name in all the earth we praise. We magnify your name. We give your glory. We praise you for you are God and God alone and God that stand all by yourself and there is none like you. For you are everlasting to everlasting and you are God and we are here in your presence to worship you, to praise you, and to give you all the glory, for you are worthy of the glory. So we come before your presence this day, O oh God. We thank you for your presence here with us. We thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence. You have brought us here on this, your Holy Sabbath day, where we want to worship you, because it is in you that we live and move and have our being. And you have created us to worship you. And that's why we come. We come in faith because we are confident that the God who created us is here. The Lord of the Sabbath is here. And we are very happy that you have brought us from every parts of the United States to be here on this, on this day. So Father, we want to say thanks. Thank you. Even though it's raining on the outside, we have the showers of blessing on the inside because our mighty God is here. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We ask for your forgiveness. 
Lord, we ask that you will forgive us for complaining, forgive us for murmuring, when you have made all the provisions for us, especially parents, to be, to bring our children here. Lord, forgive us when we do not extend the invitations to others for them to come and taste the blessings at Pine Forge Academy. Lord, from this day forward, help us to go and promote Pine Forge Academy. Sometimes we are selfish because we only take it for ourselves and our children. While other children are dying, parents are confused and depressed because they don't know what to do with their children. And you have brought us this far by faith, leaning on the everlasting arms. And so we can testify of the goodness of the Lord when we leave here today. Lord, we just want to give you all the praise. We thank you for all the parents. We thank you for the prospective parents that will bring their children because we are going to tell them in faith. We are grateful for the parents of the freshmen, freshmen parents who are here today who have, who have the faith like a mustard seed to bring their children. Lord, we ask that you will bless them with finance, bless them with the means to provide so that they can continue to bring their children. Father, we give you all the glory for these freshman parents that are here. And we want to extend our gratitude to all the sophomore parents. Oh, Father, you have given them a year and another year, and their children are still here. Yes. Hallelujah to the God of grace. I pray that you continue to bless the sophomore parents. Make your face shine upon them. May they smile all the way and have the faith that you will bring them to junior year and senior years. Lord, we're grateful. We give you thanks for the junior parents that three years and going on to the fourth, you have been blessing them financially. You have been blessing them with strength and vigor and faith because it's by your grace that they're here today and they're looking forward for another year. So I ask that you will continue to bless them financially. Make your face shine up in them. May you give them health and strength so that they can provide for their children. Lord, and we are grateful for the senior parents. Hallelujah. Oh, four years, four years of toil and labor. It was not easy, but it was well worth it. Because this, this afternoon, it will be senior presentation. Hallelujah to the God of grace, the Jehovah, the Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides, the Jehovah healer who gives us the strength and keep us healthy so we can work to provide so that make this possible. Lord, we want to bless everyone to this, today, those that are sick, Lord, in our congregation right now. We pray Jehovah Rapha, who is the God of healer. There is a balm in Gilead can break every chain and make the sin sick soul. Hallelujah. I ask that you touch these individuals from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Touch every cell, every capillary, every blood vessels and purify them. Promigate their, their, their being, oh God. Lord, you are the one who can, dry, can, dry, can re replenish dry bones. You can. So I'm asking you that when they leave here today, they may remember that Jehovah Rapha is here and you and they need to take you wherever they go. So I pray for all those who are depressed or anxious that you will give them the peace. Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. Be with each and every one today. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, Jehovah Makadesh, who sanctify, sanctify your people today. Lord, may we, when we leave this place, we will leave with a different perspective. We will continue to worship you every single day because worship is of every day. Oh, Father, we ask for a blessing upon the pastor who will be about to break the bread of life. May you sanctify him. May you fill him with your Holy Spirit. May you guard every, every moment of his words that when he speaks today, oh Father, names, 
souls will be blessed for your kingdom and will be re rejuvenated to want to continue to worship you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory because you are such an awesome God and we thank you. Dear Lord God, we give you glory and we give you honor for all that you've done for us, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity for all the students from my perspective, Lord God, to be here at Pine Forge Academy, to have the opportunity to worship, to lead out in worship, Lord God, to sing and to praise your holy name, Lord God. As a word of encouragement, I pray that you would continue to be with us, especially the seniors, dear Lord. I pray that you'll help us to understand that hope that is seen is not hope, dear God. But we hope for what we do not see, Lord God. We are, expect we are expecting your grace with perseverance, dear Lord God. So I pray that you would give us the strength to continue. You give us the strength to push on. We pray that you forgive us, Lord God, for the sins that we are conscious of and the sins that we are not, Lord God. Sanctify us because our righteousness is but nothing but filthy rags. But it is under the blood of your son, Lord God, that we can be here and that we can, we can give you glory, we can give you honor, we can give you praise. Um, Lord God, I just want to thank you for the service and what it has been so far. Um, the praise team, the choir, Lord God, the blessings. Um, that have really, truly ascended from your throne, descended from your throne, Lord God. I just want to say thank you for being the God that you are. We thank you for being um, the El Roy, the God that sees, Lord God. There are people in this congregation who have worries on their hearts that they wouldn't tell a soul, but you know. Lord God, as we learn throughout this week of prayer, there's no need to put up a front with you, God, because you already know. You already know, Lord God, so I pray that you would be with us and you'd give us the courage and you'd give us the strength to talk to you, Lord God, and be real with you so that you can help us and you can't, you can't heal the people that we are pretending to be, Lord God. So I pray that you would help us to be 100% authentic with you so that you may pour out your grace and that your Holy Spirit may have us vessel to dwell in, Lord God. Be with us throughout the rest of the service and most importantly, save us when you come, dear Lord. I pray that each and every single soul in this room will be saved when you come, Lord God, so that we all may hear those words and we all may sit at the welcome table as we sang last night. Be with us now, Lord God, for the rest of the service. Open our minds as you did for the disciples so that we may understand the scripture that will be brought to us, Lord God. Give us peace and help us to know that you are everything to us, Lord. Help us to trust in that fact um, regardless of what the trials of life may bring. Give us peace, Lord God. And give us serenity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Church. My name is Earl Shepard. This is my wife, Dr. Vanessa Shepard, and our sons, uh, Eric, Aaron Shepard, and Eric Shepard. We're the Shepherds, and we're here to give you the offertory. So, hi, everyone. I am overwhelmed, so I have to collect myself. Um, so, as we're thinking about the offertory, we're actually going to have. Um, we're gonna pray um, for the deacons first before they go out so they can actually start to move forward. Um, one of the things uh, we were reflecting on is how God loves a cheerful giver. If you've been a cheerful giver your whole life, raise your hand. Your whole life, I gotta put my hand down. Uh, and two things came to mind. So one was when I was a college student um, and I was a broke college student. I just could not keep any money. Um, and my parents really sacrificed, so I'm in church and I felt this urge to Giving um, tithe wasn't an issue because that was really imprinted, but it was the offering. And it was to give the rest of the money that was in my wallet, which was no more than $20, right? And I'm like, what could God really do with $20? And I felt the urge. I'd hoped I'd never have that urge, but I did, so I gave it. And before I even got in the car with my parents, someone came up, gave me a hug, and put a big bill in my hand. A big bill. And so I kind of learned about, okay, I can't beat God's giving. It doesn't always happen like that, but it does. So fast forward to the fact that we have seniors here. I did not think we would be here, okay? 
So the giving, my most precious gifts are these two right here. And when Sister Rachel in seven, when they were in seventh grade said, you're going to send them to Pine Forge, I'm like, mm-hmm, I can't give them. But what? let me just say, it's a sacrifice. And as a sister prayed, it, it hasn't been easy, but it was worth it. We have the creative arts that should have an Emmy, the choir that should charge 200 plus, okay, for every uh, ministry. We have the teachers and the staff that pour into and are truly patient and guide our students that are worth their weight in gold. And then we have opportunities like today to release and to praise and worship together so that we can forgive each other and that we can go to heaven together. That's priceless. So dig deep, be a cheerful giver, give till it hurts, and keep on giving. And I think Aaron is going to pray for the offering in advance. Bow your heads and close your eyes for prayer. Actually, we're going to read the scripture before we do the prayer, and that will be given to you by my brother. Bring the full tide into the storehouse, so that there may be food in my house, and thus put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. See if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down you an overflowing blessing. Now we will do the closing of the offering prayer. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for giving us the gift of life. Even though we don't have anything that's materialistic that would satisfy you, you want our relationship with you. That is our gift to you, Lord. Please help us to pursue you and want to get to know you every day because at the end of the day, the only thing that goes to heaven with us is our character, Lord. Lord, please bless everybody in this room for those who didn't give and those who could give. But bless everybody, Lord, because at the end of the day, we're all your children. We're all your gift. And it's not what we hand out to you physically. It's what we hand out to you spiritually, Lord. So, Lord, as we end this offering, Lord, please bless all the deacons, everyone who, who worked behind the scenes to do everything, Lord. Bless everyone, for you are the true gift, and we need to keep that in mind, Lord. And as everyone goes out on spring break, remember to give with a grateful heart and be a good Samaritan and an ambassador of Christ to everyone we see. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
of things hope for the evidence of things we cannot see listen by faith the universe was created by God's word. So what we do was formed by what we can see.
everyone. Happy Sabbath. Thank you, Amar, for in introducing us. My name is Latasha Hewitt. This is my husband, Andre Hewitt, and our other daughter, Kaden Hewitt. And it is our pleasure to read the scripture for you this morning. It comes from 1 Chronicles chapter 13, verses 13 and 14. He did not take the ark to be with him in the city of David. Instead, he took it aside to the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. The ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom in his house for three months. And the Lord blessed his household and everything that he had. I just want to add to that really quickly. I just want to encourage all of us to read God's word. Let me say that one more time. I want to encourage all of us to read God's word. I believe the Bible says uh, that man shall not live by bread alone, right? So to me, it's not just about the food that we eat, uh, the water that we drink. You need something more to get you moving. You need something more to get you through the day. You need something more to get you through this life. Okay, so reading this word to me is an essential part of your health. And I'm all about mental health, right? So without this, I don't believe a person is truly living. Okay, so I encourage you, please spend time in the word teach your children to read the word because it's through God's word that we're truly going to make it. Amen. May the Lord bless the hearers and doers of his word. Sabbath, everyone. Um, I'm Azriel. I'm Maylin Chavers. I'm Azaria Carroll. And we will be introducing our speaker for today. My dad is a native of Los Angeles, California. But he has lived most of his life here on the East Coast. My dad has attended some of the greatest schools in Adventist education, graduating from the one and only Pine Forge Academy. He was class of 90 and Oakwood College in class of 95, where he received his bachelor's of science and biology. And by June 2000, he received a master's of divinity degree from Andrews University Theological Seminary. During his matriculation through Andrews University, he met one of the most stunning and talented women he could have ever had the opportunity to lay his eyes upon. My mom, Teresa McDaniels, born and raised in Southern California, true to the word of God in Proverbs 18.22, she was a good thing and has only become better with time as she blesses his life and ministry with the favor of God. You know, young pastors tend to have a sweet spot for young people. So it is this favor that blessed them with the two most important young people of their lives, their kids, myself, Azriel, and my brother, Jael. Uncle Dwayne has had the privilege of serving God in the Allegheny East Conference for over 20 years, spending the bulk of his ministry serving the city of Baltimore at the Cherry Hill SDA Church now known as the New Beginnings SDA Church and at the Sharon Seventh-day Adventist Church. 
Not confining his ministry to the church, Uncle Dwayne has often seen his children's elementary school, been seen at his children's elementary school at Baltimore Junior Academy. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> um, <clears throat> interacting with the staff and students. There he would teach, counsel, give Bible studies, play as, as well as serve as the vice chair of the school board. <clears throat> On top of all that, he also served as a secretary of both the Baltimore Area Ministerium and the Cherry Hill Ministerium Alliance. As if he doesn't have enough on his plate yet, Pastor P serves as the pastor of the Calvary SDA Church and School in Newport News, Virginia. The area leader of the Virginia Area Ministerium represents Virginia as a member of the AEC Executive Committee and served as a member, a community member of the Faith, Justice, and Community Organization, which is an organization made up of a group of citizens, clergy, and police officers designed to improve relations between the police and citizens of Newport News, Virginia, as well as humbly served as the former president of the PFA Parents Association. One thing is clear. Pastor Pete loves the Lord and is committed to spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ based upon John 12, 32. And if I be lifted up from the earth, all will draw unto me. After this special music, you will hear the voice of my father, my uncle, my pastor, Pastor T. Dwayne Prevent. been a long time. I haven't sung this way in a long time. So y'all pray. Pray, pray, pray church.
great and dynamic worship service. And to the, how do you say it? The perspicacious. Perspicacious. Class of 2024. I want to say congratulations to all of you. I know that it has been a very interesting time for you as you have matriculated through these challenging halls that Pine Forge presents. But you are almost at the end. And we are here to celebrate that you're coming into the final stretch. To the parents, I want to say good afternoon to you. To those of you that are our leaders, to our principal, to our vice principal, uh, to my PFA Parents Association president, I want to greet you guys and thank you for this opportunity to be able to be up and speak before you. Now, I've been, in a, I've been at a white church before. And uh, at a white church, you know, when it gets to be almost 12 o'clock, No matter where you are in your sermon, they may give you about five minutes of grace. And I'm not trying to throw the white church under the bus, so have mercy on me. But I also recognize what time it is. Some of your stomachs are already growling. You know, some of you are already looking at your clock like, golly, the pastor just got up at 1.36. How is he going to handle this? And then the others of you are like, well, my part is done. Amen. But God is good. And so today, I want you to know, I want you guys to pray for me. I've been overwhelmed by this spirit. My eyes are about to be watering. The music is just continuing this spirit. I'm a man. But at the same time, but at the same time, we're excited. And of course, uh, I want to go ahead and get into what we have for today. Uh, I did come with a full message and I understand uh, the time that we have. So if you don't, if you don't mind, uh, give me a little bit over two o'clock, all right? And then at the same time, we hope, to, uh, we hope to have you out in a reasonable amount of time so that you can go eat. Is that all right? Would you partner with me with that? All right, so if you see people getting ready to leave and it's before 2 o'clock, tell them, sit your hips down. <laughs> so let's get into it. We're going to 1 Chronicles chapter 13. 1 Chronicles chapter 13, and I want to just read verse 8 in lieu of the time. I want you to be able to read when you have some time, if you have not already read it, the whole chapter and the chapter that follows but I'm going to try to do my best to keep it simple but yet pointed. The Bible says, and if you don't mind rising to your full stature, that means standing to your feet. First Chronicles chapter 13, and we want to read verse 8. The Bible says, Then David and all Israel played music before God with all their might. Somebody say, with all their might. With all their might with singing on harps, on stringed instruments, on tambourines, on cymbals, and with trumpets. Heavenly Father, here we are. We want to say thank you for this awesome time that we have had already. Now, God, I'm overwhelmed with emotion. But this time, Breathe on me one more time. You know what time I'm working with. You know what I prepared. You know what your people need to hear. You know who needs to hear it. And so God, with your power, take over. Angels of glory, we always invite you into these spaces. We recognize that at the time in which the word is being preached, that demons always try to come in and bring distraction. They try to pinch kids. They try to make it feel like you got to go to the bathroom at the wrong time. You want to go to sleep, but God, let your angels come in and fill this place. 
And when it is all said and done, may we all be able to praise with all our might. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say amen. 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 You may be seated. The title of my sermon for today is entitled Praise on Pause. Praise on Pause. And I want to begin by asking you to say the word praise. Praise. I think y'all are warming up already. Praise. Praise. It is what a person gives to God in response to how he has been to them. He has been a great creator. He has been Jehovah. He is Yahweh. He is the great I am. And when a person praises God, we are often praising him because of how he operates or shows up in our life. Can I get a witness? This word praise actually stems from a Latin word that means value or price. And when you put it together with praising God, you are actually giving God what he deserves. You are also taking time to give to others reasons why you should praise him too. That's why Psalm chapter 150, we are told that the Bible shares where we ought to praise him. We're to praise him in the sanctuary or in the heavens above. We did that. The Bible says we ought to praise him and it gives us a why we ought to praise him. For his mighty acts and his excellent greatness. Check. The Bible also tells us how we ought to praise him with various musical instruments, including our voice, check. We are also told when we ought to praise him, and that is every time you and exhale, exhale, check. But the Bible also says who should praise him, and let me just check this off. Let everything that hath breath do what? Praise the Lord. You see, praise is multifaceted. Many people sing and they play musical instruments. They sing songs, they sing hymns, they sing gospel music. At the same time, it incorporates a number of other ways in which we can praise God. We can praise God by giving your offering. Praise God by lifting up holy hands. Praise God by appropriate dancing praise God by praying praise God by testifying to your neighbor what God has done for you and you can praise God by your lifestyle Fred Hammond said there is a certain emotion that goes along with praying and with praising and it should be like a fire that's in your heart when you praise Jonathan Nelson said you should praise God and understand that there's power in your praise because when you're stuck in a battle praise ought to be your weapon and and many other people simply just say I don't know how to use praise as my weapon I don't feel it all the time but I just love to praise him is there anybody in here that just loves to praise God I love to praise him in the morning praise him in the noonday and praise him in the evening we just love to praise God why because our God inhabits the praises of his people he comes inside the place where you and I are giving praise and he says I just love it like that the Bible tells us that when it comes down to praise perhaps one of the greatest people that you could ever read about is named David David that youngest son of Jesse David the one who killed Goliath with a simple sling and a stone David the one who was anointed king to follow Saul David the author of 73 Psalms in the book of Psalms, David, that man who the Bible says is after God's own heart, David, that man who ought to get respect, and you need to put some respect on his name because he is a king, and so we ought to call him King David. Ladies and gentlemen, and when we come to 1 Chronicles chapter 13, I want you to understand that when we are looking at his life, he has now been in a position where he has been, where he has been conquering different armies and enemies. He has been taking care of business. He just went to the Jebusites and he took over Jerusalem. And there he says, listen, this is going to be my city. And so he said, I'm missing something because I can't go into my city without the 
ark of the Lord. And so there he decided that he would gather all of his men, all of his people together, and he asked them, do you think that this is a good thing to go and get the ark and to bring it into Jerusalem? They said, yes, we think it's a good thing. And so they put their plan together and they started on their journey to get the ark of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just tell you that, that there was a problem, though. Why wasn't the ark of God with David already? The problem is, it's because years before, the Philistines had come up and they had gone against the Israelites. They had defeated them and had taken the ark as a trophy as though their God, help me Holy Ghost, as though their God was better than our God. And so as a result, the trophy was being, trans was being taken around from place to place in the Philistine territory. And yet the social media at that time was going crazy. Things were going viral because our God, who who never loses a battle is now being carted around in enemy territory in enemy hands and the people that he's supposed to represent are the ones that are looking funny because their God the symbol of their God is in enemy hands and it's interesting that for seven months seven months we find that the Philistines had carted the Ark of the Covenant around in their territory until God started to say, I'm more than just an ark. You got to read the Bible because God, every place that that ark went and they either looked into it or they started to do some things with it. The people started to catch boils and diseases and they said, oh no, something is up with this thing. Why don't you take it? And so from city to city, they carted that thing around until seven months later, they came up with the bright idea. We need to give it back to the children of Israel. And so the Israelites ended up taking back that ark and they put it in a man named Abinadab's house and there it sat for 20 years. Amen. It's interesting, ladies and gentlemen, that when you begin looking at this, for 20 years, it appears that Abinadab could care less about this ark being his, in his spot. It's interesting, why? Because when you begin looking at it, Understand that the way I see it, the Bible says earlier in the chapter, I don't have time to read it, but the Bible says earlier in the chapter that during the reign of King Saul that the Ark of the Covenant had been neglected, it had been ignored, it had been, uh, it had been pushed aside. It also starts to talk about the fact that we don't see any divine blessings. We don't hear any talks coming out of Abinadab's house of what was taking place that was positive because the Ark of the Covenant was in his house. And, and then all also understand that it was a time in which when they had to relocate the ark understand it was treated any old kind of way and then lastly we end up seeing that the evidence of why we feel or why I feel like Abinadab didn't really respect this ark of the covenant was seen in his children they had no respect for the ark because it had been in their home and it was as if it was just another piece of furniture. And yet what a tragedy it is that the thing that would be the greatest blessing to their lives, they neglected, they ignored, they took for granted, they didn't appreciate, and they didn't even acquire at it and as a result, they just treat it as though it was another piece of furniture. And brothers and sisters, can I just come a little closer to you? Uh, because perhaps sometimes we do the same thing. We've been raised up in the church. We have gone to Pine Forge. We have had our Bibles, but yet at the same time when we begin looking at it, there comes a point in time where we perhaps don't reap the blessings that should be there because we don't really appreciate what we got. We got Bibles, but don't read it. We got time, but we don't pray to God. We have churches, but we don't do what we need to do at the churches. We have pastors and teachers, but we don't respect them. We have schools, and we try not to support them. And at the same time, God gives us blessings, and that would bless our families and our lives. And in a way, we have a tendency to not appreciate the blessings. And so here comes David, 
David said, I don't know what was happening in Abinadab's house. But I do know one thing, that we need that ark. Because I have a relationship with God. So he gathered all the people together and there he began to have this processional. They were trying to move from Kirath Jerim until Jerusalem so that they could bring it to the place where he had carved out for it. And there as they are traveling through that territory, understand that they're praising God with their cymbals, their tambourines, their, their trumpets. They're praising God, the Bible says, with all their might. And ladies and gentlemen, can I just tell you that I know some of you can't get with this because when you read that, you don't know what that's really talking about because every time that there's an opportunity to praise you're always holding back some of us hold back because we're uncool and we think that we're too cool to really praise God we can't raise our hands we just raise our hands some people are just too distracted because all of a sudden people want to text you and they want to say stuff but at the same time you pick up your phone and you can't participate you have people who don't praise God because the people that they're sitting next to don't praise God and it stifles the praise on the pew and at the same time there are people who just don't know what to praise God for so so they don't praise God anyway and in the process you find that your church may not teach praising God so when it's time to praise God you just sit like this but I think that there's something else in this text that we see because one more thing and why people probably can't praise God is this we can't praise God fully unless we're the ones leading the praise haven't you seen that haven't you seen that? Let me, not, let me not call on certain people, but at the same time, perhaps you've sat in the church and you get a praise leader that gets up, praise the Lord, everybody, praise the Lord. They want everybody to praise the Lord when they're up. But when they're in the seat and somebody else is up, they sitting their hips down. I can't seem to get with the program. And there are individuals, brothers and sisters, that when somebody else is, is getting blessed and they're praising God, people can't seem to put their full energy into it. Why? Because it's not their child graduating. It's not their bills getting paid. It's not their job promotion that's helping them to pay for tuition. And their child is not going to senior class trip. And so therefore, they're there holding back. And yet somehow, when those blessings seem to turn and now they're coming on to you, then oftentimes, now we're the ones that say, you need to praise God with me and so here's David David says listen the way it was back in the day if I said we're going to praise everybody showed up to praise old and young rich and poor black and white if there was black and white and then of course moms and dads old and young ladies and gentlemen everybody showed up to praise and they praised God with all their might until they encountered an issue now the law told them that there were supposed to be four priests that were supposed to transport the Ark of the Covenant of God on their shoulders. But they sadly discarded that command as if God was joking. They followed the example of the Philistines. They put the Ark of the Covenant on a new cart that was driven by oxen and at the same time the two sons of Abinadab, he had three, one was a priest, we're not going to include him, but the two sons of Abinadab, Uzzah and Ahio, they were the escorts of this particular, of this particular motion. And so here we find that the sacred Ark of the Covenant that represented God being alongside with his people is now being chauffeured not by priests but by oxen. And don't, and don't you know that on this particular day, these sure-footed oxen had the nerve to stumble. Any other day, they can go ahead and they can walk down the pathway. But now one of them begins to stumble. It now starts to upset the cart in the back. And because Uzzah wasn't thinking right, or maybe he was, he thought that it was a good idea because the Ark of the Covenant looked like it might be falling off, that he reaches out his hand. Wait a minute, Uzzah, are you a priest? No. Are you a Levite? No. What you doing? 
I'm trying to help God. And it's interesting, ladies and gentlemen, that he puts his hands out, he touches the sacred furniture, and there God strikes him down dead, and the praise is put on pause. And sometimes I just need to pause right here because I'm thinking about Uzzah. How is it that Uzzah would think it's okay that he's not ordained to be able to touch the sacred ark, but because he sees that the thing is in trouble, then he decides to reach out his hand? Well, did you, don't you remember that I told you that it stayed at his house? for 20 years all while he was growing up he just thought it was a simple furniture he thought that he had certain privileges that other people didn't have he lived with it in his home he looked at it every day they played around it they ate around it and therefore he lost respect for holy things and as long as the ark was in his father's home, it never challenged him that he ought to be holy and live a righteous lifestyle. And so it played into his demise, and yet Uzzah reminds us that God still expects us who know better to uphold and reverence God and the things of God. And yet, I just believe that sometimes we've gotten a little too comfortable. Too comfortable with holy things, can I get a witness? And oftentimes, because we're this, we're so visual now, everything's on social media and YouTube and you can watch it on TV. Oftentimes, we're able to look at other people who are disrespecting holy things and we are influenced by that so much to the point that we try to emulate them and operate like them when we know better. Uzzah struck down dead because he got too comfortable with the holy things of God and yet here we are in our era brothers and sisters where we have people like William Murphy who is a great songwriter but at the same time y'all remember that down in, in the New Year's Eve program and he ended up transforming his sanctuary into a club with a DJ and they played the song Walk It Out. And they're busy swag surfing in the sanctuary. Then it's the Super Bowl. Crossroads Church in Cincinnati actually turns their worship service into a Super Bowl halftime and a halftime show where the female pastor ends up kicking the Bible into the crowd. My time. Oh, no, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Come on now. We're about to hit Easter or Resurrection Weekend. And y'all remember last year when he put on his, uh, at Transformation Church, he put on his stage play, which actually embellished and secularized the greatest story ever told in the world, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he makes it out to be more of a controversial spectacle than a cause to represent and to have people repent and accept Jesus Christ and be saved. Ladies and gentlemen, and dare I say, young people, I would say the perspicacious class of 2024, you're about to enter into the real world. And the real world, you have been taught how God expects you to be. And you and I cannot go into this world continuing to look at people who don't believe, who don't understand, who don't hold God as holy, and then try to follow them. You can't follow the same trends because what you have learned in these Pine Forge years is more than some of these guys have learned in the seminary. So this praise party, this praise party ends in a funeral processional. And David gets upset and now he's at the point where he's like, God, come on, what are you trying to do here? And so he says, forget this. I'm just going to find another place and put the ark there until later. The interesting thing is, when you begin listening to it, you start to recognize that nobody really wanted to have that place, that thing, in their home. David didn't want it coming into his house. So he was like, where, where, can, we, where can we house it? And just like you and me, they're like, no, don't bring it over here. I just saw what happened to Uzzah. 
I got kids. I got a wife. God is not going to do that to me. And so the rest of the people looked at that as a, as a situation. And as they examined themselves, they looked and said, I'm, I'm not prepared. My house is not ready. I just can't have the symbol of the presence of God in my home. And there's some people that when it comes down to it, they are too busy, they are too thinking of themselves, they are too full of sin that when the opportunity comes to where they can do something for God or house something for God, they're not ready to receive it. God wants to come to your house. God wants to put up symbols in your house that says, I'm here. And at the same time, there are individuals that are not ready. And as a result, your family can't be blessed. And so that's why the Bible goes on to say that the ark of God ends up resting in Obed-Edom's house. And it was there for 90 days. Obed-Edom. Obed-Edom, nobody really preaches about him that much. Obed-Edom is a Levite of Israel. He's a man of God. He's trained. He's prepared to minister to God in this ark. He finds himself in the right place at the right time, and there he has the right attitude to now be a blessing, uh, a blessing to God and receive blessings from God. And so when he invites this ark into his house, three things begin to happen. Obed-Edom humbly accepts it, and he recognizes what this ark is all about. Number one, understand that the ark represents the throne of God. Everybody say the throne of God. The throne of God. Understand that when you talk about the throne of God, now you're talking about that you have the great king of kings and the great lord of lords, that you are creating a space for him to be inside your home. That means that his power and his authority now reigns in your home. That means that his will is going to be ultimate in your home. That means that kingdom business takes place at your home. That means that wherever you, wherever God has ownership over the lives of those that are in your house, God still is able to rule. God also has angels and humans who cooperate together to do God's biddings in your home. And then it makes it a satellite, a location of heaven right here on earth. Ladies and gentlemen, there was a story that is told real quickly. There was a story that is told about a, a man who just got married. He was excited. He brought his dad over so he can see his new house. And, and so because they had just bought a house. Anybody just buying a house? You just bought a house? Uh, yeah, houses are very expensive nowadays. God bless you, my brother. And so he ends up bringing it over. So the dad goes through all the rooms and looks at everything in the house. And then he says, son, this house is really nice. He says, but... uh." As I see it, there's nothing in it to tell me whether you are with God or with the devil. There's no symbol here. And so that man went back and he started thinking about it and he said, you know, my dad is right. He said, now from this time on, every time people come into my house, I don't want them to have to think who I serve. And so he took over all the other rooms and made sure that each room had something that had a message that said that I'm a follower of God. I've got a question for you, ladies and gentlemen. Can God put his throne in your house? Or would it be too much of a mess because you have great beautiful decor and so it now has to go into the bathroom and, or, or has to go into the basement and out of sight? Or would you move your family portraits or your pictures of friends so that you would now have space for God to take up on the best wall in the house? Or would you replace your fraternity and your sorority shrines and symbols with the throne of God so that God has prominent place and your fraternity and your sorority stuff are somewhere else? Ladies and gentlemen, would you even even remodel your living room so that the throne of God has prominent place and you put your big screen TV in the basement. We've gotten to the point where we think that when people come over to our house, people have a hard time seeing if there's a throne of God here. Number two, you find that this ark represented the mercy seat of God. Help me, Holy Ghost. 
Understand that at this particular point, you start to recognize that the mercy, the mercy seat of God, uh, uh, that on the top was a cover. It had the angels that were looking down on whatever God was supposed to be doing. Whenever God showed up, there was a Shekinah glory that would come into it. And so everybody would see this cloud that would hover in that space. But what you need to know is that on the inside of the Ark of the Covenant, there were three different things. Three different things. Number one, you find that there was a manna. Whenever we talk about manna, understand that manna was given on a daily basis. God didn't give you more than you needed. And so when you started to think that now God is bringing, or Obed is, Obed-Edom is now bringing the ark into his home, he's now reminded that every day God is going to supply him with new mercies. Every day God is going to take care of his food. That every day God is going to take care of his desires. That every day God is going to take care of his needs. That every day he doesn't have to worry about his children. He doesn't have to worry about his wife. He doesn't have to worry about anything that's going on because he knows that his daily bread is going to be supplied but then secondly understand that now you start to see that the second thing is that you have Aaron's rod budding what that means is that God now has special ordained authority that you ought to respect and so when you begin to respect them recognize that Aaron was the leader or he was the priest at that time and when his rod budded it was to identify him that he was the man that God chose and so is to remind Obed-Edom don't you get too big for yourself to think that you're the only one that can do certain things God has certain people that he calls God has certain people that he appoints to do special business don't become like uh, don't become like Uzzah in certain respects stay in your place God gives all of us a certain privilege and a certain calling number three you also see, and I know I see that's in different order, but you also see that he also has the commandments of God. The commandments of God are there to bless him. But it also says that when a person breaks the commandments of God, now you need to have an atonement. Something has to die in order for you to have a proper relationship with God. Now for us, we're now able to see because we've seen back and the Lord has blessed us to see Jesus, we understand that now every time Obed-Edom is starting to look at that Ark of the Covenant, he's starting to realize, hey, God is living with us and he knows that we're not perfect. And so as a result that we not, are not perfect, he has made a way so that now if we just confess our sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so all we have to do is seek him in the morning, seek him in the afternoon, seek him in the noonday, seek him in the evening. And when we confess, God says, I will apply the blood of Jesus who has come and has sacrificed himself for you. I will apply that blood to you so that we can have our relationship again yeah. ladies and gentlemen and that's where you find mercy is there anybody in here that needs a little bit of mercy you know that you're not perfect you know that you don't have it all going on you know that you don't have it all right but at least when you confess your sins to God now God is the type of God that now comes back and says I know exactly what's going on with you yeah. and I'm gonna offer you mercy Ladies and gentlemen, and then cutting through, the, cutting through the field, he now also has the presence of God. Amen. I don't know about you, but I like being with my wife. Amen. I like being with my children. Amen. I like being with my parents. Amen. I like being with you guys. Because it's the presence. One of the things that we missed during the pandemic was the fact that we didn't have interaction. You see, the Ark of the Covenant was presented because it carried this notion that every time you saw the Ark of the Covenant, it reminded everybody that God was with us. And during the most trying circumstances, you still saw the Ark of the Covenant and that continued to say, no matter what, what issues you're dealing with, no matter how big your troubles are, God is still with you. Yeah. 
And when you saw the Ark of the Covenant, you recognized that there would come times in the Israelites' life and journey where that Ark of the Covenant actually represented a major miracles. And so when you saw the exodus from Egypt, you understand that the priests were able to bear the Ark of the Covenant at the time in which they went down to the Red Sea. And as they entered in, the Ark was there and then the waters parted and they were able to go across on dry land. When you see them with the, with the walls of Jericho, they were impregnable. But at the same time, they started marching around with that Ark of the Covenant. It was as if God was going around with them and the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. But when the Ark was not with them. They went into the battle of AI. It was just a small group of people. You know, they didn't have to worry about it. They only needed to take a little bit of people in the army. But at the same time, ladies and gentlemen, they thought that they didn't need the ark. And they went up and they got their hips kicked. And so they came back with their tails between the legs, coming back home saying, they beat us. And what I'm trying to tell you real quickly is this. Is that when the ark of God is present and the Lord is desired... Your problems and difficulties in your life are often changed and miracles begin to take place. I don't know about you brothers and sisters. I'm at the point now where I can't, look at the, I can't look at the ark of God and think that it's just a regular piece of furniture. I don't mean no disrespect. Yes, it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a gold-covered box and at the same time has some great emblems in it. But there's nothing without the presence of God. And when it's invited into my home, I'm looking for miracles. I'm looking for blessings. I'm looking for things to be different than somebody that doesn't have it. And that's where I'm trying to encourage somebody today that when you have the Ark of the Covenant in your house, jobs are going to be found, new businesses are going to be started, godly spouses will be obtained, breakthroughs will happen, enemies will be put in check, final exams will be passed, diplomas will be achieved, scholarships will be awarded, plans will come to pass, and miracles will take place, all because the Lord is there. We need to bring the Ark of God back to our families. Because too many people are operating in families with no evidence of God's blessings. And they're wondering why they're overwhelmed with troubles. Could it be that there's no ark there? But ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen understand that when it came down to it, Obed-Edom said, look, I don't know what's happening, but I like it. Everybody else in the community was seeing that in 30 days, excuse me, in 90 days, Obed-Edom's house was being blessed beyond measure. Prosperity was happening. Diseases were being healed. Their lives were more peaceful. They were drawn closer to God. Their bills were being paid. Their families were more happier. Their parents were wiser. Their children were more obedient. And they started to recognize, well, maybe God is in the blessing business all over again. Word gets back to David. David says, oh, brother, I believe that God is coming back. And so let's try to start, uh, let's try to strike up this party all over again. And so he ends up calling everybody back together and he says, listen, let's go to Obed-Edom's house and now let's do this thing the right way because we need to praise God, but we got to praise him right. And ladies and gentlemen, let me just tell you that David ends up taking that sign and he says, I'm it's time for me to unpause my blessing and now let's reconvene this praise party. And that's what I'm here to say and I'm about to let you go, but we Will you just help me out when I preach this that says Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let's exalt his name together. You've heard your praise and some of you have had your praise on pause, but I'm here to push your praise pause button so that you can get back to praising. You need to praise God now because you're at the end of your four-year journey. You can praise now, God now, because you might have been kicked out, you might have been suspended, you might have been on the DF and N list, but now this time everybody's coming to see you march down the aisle at the end of May. You might have passed your SAT scores. You can praise God now. You can praise God now because scholarships are coming your way. Ladies and gentlemen, David got to the point 
where he was like, listen, God has just been too good to us. And we can praise him with all our might. Your head's about, your eyes are closed. I told you I'm going to let you out. Today, I'm reminded of Pastor Noah Washington's sermon from last time. Pastor Washington came and gave us a challenge because even going to Pine Forge seems like our families are not always in line with the will of God. And then the Holy Spirit comes back and says, I want you to evaluate yourself because even in these last days, I want to bless you. I look back over my life I look back over the time in which, number one, a friend of mine came to, my, came to me when I was at Andrews. And he said, Prevet, he said, do you have an altar in your house? I was like, an altar? What are you talking about? I went over to his house. I went over to his house and I found out that he had set up a place. He had set up a place so that he and God would meet. Thank you. That he and God would meet. And when he would meet, and when people would come in, they would recognize that that was a place that he met with God. I did that. I wasn't the best student going through Andrews, but it was something powerful to know that every day I was able to meet with God in a particular place. And it was life changing. I met my wife there. God blessed me with a number of different things there. I was able to graduate, not at the top of my class, but I was able to graduate and I was able to move on. And even when I was looking for a job, do you know that they told me, Prevent, we don't have any spots available. We're just going to uh, put you and give you an interview and we'll just wait and see if anybody calls me. But by the time I graduate, Allegheny East is ringing my phone saying, we got a job for you. And then ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to say is this. If you have not put God as number one in your house, if he's not number one in your heart, how much longer do you need to wait? I dare say you look around and you see some people that do have it. And I believe that God is blessing their children. God is blessing their families. And some of you are trying to figure out, well, what's the newest technique? What's this? What's that? What can I do better? Just allow God into your house. And God will begin to bless you exceedingly, abundantly above what you could ever ask or imagine. And so I'm going to invite everybody that wants to have God in their home, God in their heart to stand with me. Two families were viewed today one that didn't care about God and one that did. One had 20 years of experience with God's furniture. The other one had 90 days. How many of you want to be like Obed-Edom? Bring God in, try him out for 90 days and watch how he blessed. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, God, for your people giving me some time to be able to preach the message that you gave. Thank you for me being able to edit according to your will. And thank you for everybody making this decision. God, people come here and send their children here to learn more of you. And sometimes our young people get it, but our parents don't. So we're standing here today saying, have mercy on us. Because we all want to be blessed. And even when we're not in line, look at us. You've been blessing us in spite of ourselves. And so God, anoint us all afresh today. And as we go back to our homes, bless us so that we can get back. And let our lifestyle be a testimony of the praise that we have taken off a of pause and we have put back so that we are going to praise you with all of our might. And may other people see it and join in worshiping you with us. Bless the school. Bless our administration. Bless all the ministries here. 
Thank you for Elder Richardson allowing me this time in the pulpit. And now I pray that you would even bless the food that everybody's going to be rushing out to get. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Prevet. Every parent's weekend, there's something else the Holy Spirit has for us, and we don't ever know how it's going to be packaged, but we're grateful for today. As the praise team is coming for our closing song, just a couple of reminders. Presentation this evening begins at 6 o'clock. We will start on time. Seniors, you need to be in the building no later than 5.30, okay? Seniors, make sure that you are here on time, dressed, and ready to be presented. Parents, you need to make sure you're ready and on time because we'll line you up at 10 minutes to 6. Uh, our senior parents also, senior parents and students, you have a quick meeting with Oakwood University here on the Oregon side of the sanctuary as soon as uh, we've had our benediction. I know that you've been blessed because I have. And so as we stand for our closing song, please keep a couple things in mind. Um, we have lots of dinners happening all over the place. Executive Parent Association members, your meal is at CC1. Okay, so please make sure that you get there. I will hand off to the praise team. about God having a blessing. We just gonna do this little vamp real quick, okay? Amen. Listen, I know it's been a long day, but if you're in anticipation of your blessing, just rock like this. Get on the balls of your feet. Just rock. Just rock. Come on. Repeat after me real quick. Say this. Say God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Come on. Say God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Say God's got a bless. 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 Your name on it. God's got a blessing. 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 With my name on it. 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 Say God's got a blessing. Say God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Say God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Let me try this for my hymn lovers. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessings we need. Come on, mercy drops. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. Cause God's got a bless. God's got a blessing. Say God's got a bless. God's got a With my name on it. With my name on it. God's got a blessing. 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 With my name on it. With my name on it. With my name on it. With your name on it. With my 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 name on it. God's got a bless. God's got a blessing. Say God's got a bless. God's got a blessing. Somebody has a benediction. God's got a bless. God's got a blessing. God's got a bless. God's got a blessing. God, we thank you so much now. For you have blessed your people. And upon them now I pray this benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father. 
and the sweet presence of the Holy Spirit continue to be with you all. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me hear you say bless, 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 bless. Say God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. With my name on it. With my name on it. Say God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. 